artist. Um, so Kathy, could you tell us more about yourself? Hi, Wendy. I'm so happy that I'm be, um, be, uh, be able to meet Wendy again here because she would know my story, you know. She knows my story. So actually, Wendy, I will share about this first, okay? Wendy, we got to know each other in 2015 because she was doing a study, a, a, a study for chronic fatigue syndrome. Yes. So that's what I have, chronic fatigue syndrome, since like 1998. So I've been managing this, um, it's really a debilitating illness, okay? Yeah. And 20 years ago, around 20 years ago, I actually recovered from a major depressive disorder. It was like, there was no, like at the end of a tunnel, I was institutionalized and everything, you know. When I start sharing, you know, they would say, you should write a book about that, you know. But I'm not an author, I'm a songwriter, you see. <laughs> so I said, oh, well, so I write songs. So I share my stories in songs. So actually, since 2007, 2007, I released my autobiographical music album, Chizu, and I, you know, I produced all the songs to, as a catharsis for myself, to share my story. And it was launched at uh, AGMI Mental, World Mental Health Day. It was launched on October 7, 2007, with a walkathon and all that. So since 2006, I've been sharing my story with my music. So this is the first time I'm speaking, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you all for being here. And thank a good friend of mine, and thank Annie Peck for inviting me. And I can meet one day again. Yes! <laughs> so I saw you wrote, uh, I mean you sent an article that said music is not medicine safe. Yes. So I'm curious like, how did music help you overcome um, yeah, all the, the struggles that you had. Yes, uh, it was, you know, at the depths of depression, I was suicidal, I was institution, institutionalized maybe, uh, uh, around about almost two years. But the turning point was someone arranged for me to volunteer at a care center at IMH. Because the person knew that I was a musician, I could play the guitar. So they, uh, they arranged for me to perform like volunteer at the Hogan Care Center for the mental patients. So every week I would be there and then I would have a session with them and then play the guitar and sing. And I, I was telling my people who know me later on, I said, if it weren't for that depression and going to the body, I wouldn't be performing at all. So it was, you know, it was in the year of 2001. And I was also sent to this uh, hospital. It was a, it's a, it's a secluded place. It's, I still remember it's Liu Road Hospital, where mental patients were like sort of abandoned, people who had no family and all that. I was also arranged to volunteer to sing for them. And at that point of time, I was still in depression, you know, I was not in the it. But every time my counselor was, okay, let's meet at a bus stop and then we'll go together, we'll go to the place. Okay, so we we'll do it. Because when we need to do something for someone, we'll I will show up, you know, I will show up when I need to do something, you'll see, you know. So I went, and then one time I heard the nurse, she, the nurse told me, she said, hey, you're very cheerful, you know. I was like, what? I'm cheerful? I was feeling awful. She said, every time, we, every time you're, you're, you're here, some mental, you know, the patients will be very happy. You know, some will, who are not speaking, or just lying there, will just come out, you know. And then, I was like, hey, oh, that is, is that one, um, you know, what? What kind of energy I'm giving out to the people, and that was, I think, that was a turning point for me. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. And helping people. Thank you a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the questions. Um, maybe now we can have some time for questions and answers. Is there any questions from the floor that 